the best way to become a better mechanical design engineer is to study the way things around us work. Today, we bring to you a universal socket tool. So it's a socket tool, but it's universal in the sense that this is able to adjust and grip hex nuts, hooks, bolts, and various shapes because of these pins that retract. Let me give you an example. This can go inside and then you can adjust the tool and tighten it. And it restores to its original position. All the pins come back. So how does this really work? What is going on inside here that's allowing these pins to come back to the original position? Pause the video and see if you can answer the question. Here we have a new intact tool and here's the tool that we tore apart. We're not gonna be able to restore this. This is pretty much done. We had to tear it apart so we can study how it works. Now, this brings me to the next topic, which is I wanna give a big thank you to everyone that likes, comments, subscribes, and shares the content. As you know, money has to come from somewhere. And by doing all the actions that I mentioned before, it helps us finance the videos and buy the tools so we can tear them apart and show you. So if you haven't liked, subscribed, and commented yet, please do so. It helps our videos spread and it gives us more of a budget to buy more tools and study them. All right, so we wanna know how this is happening internally. After pulling these out with pliers, I was able to find out that's a pretty simple mechanism. So let me turn on the brightness on my camera phone. And you can see there are pins that have compression springs. And then there's a surface that's the color orange in there. And that's what's causing the pins to come back to original position. So here we have one of the pins that's inside. I'm gonna click on the phone so the camera, there we go. And the pin has an individual, each pin has an individual spring. This white paper is going to symbolize the orange plastic that's inside here, as you can see. So we have individual pins all these individual pins that you saw in there, they're going through the orange plastic. And when you come in contact with the surface, whether there's a hex nut or whatever the case may be, it's going to push the pin down in that direction. And when you release, the pin comes back because the spring wants to expand. So first I'm gonna show you the model, the modeling technique I used and I'm gonna explain a couple of things about the design intent, and then we're gonna move into the assembly and how everything works internally. So I used resilient CAD modeling, which means you wanna put all your design intent at the top of the feature tree, like this. So all my measurements, all my sketches are here in the very top, it's called a skeleton group. And from there, I can create one body at a time. And these bodies are created separately and individually put in their corresponding folders, very organized as you can see, and the bodies will be borrowing or using parent-child relationship from the sketches in the skeleton group. So if I wanna make any edits to this solid part, all I have to do is roll the feature tree up and then make a change to the corresponding sketch. And then I roll it back down, rebuild, and it will rebuild the part. A uh, very organized way of modeling. If you want to know how to do it, uh, please leave in the comments below. I can make more videos about that. There's a couple of videos in the channel already. Uh, then I used master part modeling, which is uh, making all the parts in the same part file and making uh, multiple bodies and then doing the save bodies command, saving those bodies into an assembly and then mating them in the assembly. So let's hand it over to assembly and I'm going to show you how everything functions. Now we are in the assembly file. You can tell that by looking up here at the assembly and how everything's mated. I'm gonna show you what's going on internally. So let's go ahead and make the main body transparent so we can see what's going on. Inside we have this orange backing, which I referenced in the previous videos. Let's take a cross section view so we know what's going on and I can better explain. So imagine there's um, something that's coming in contact with the top surface of the pin and that is pushing the pin back to retract as it's retracting this spring is coming in contact with this face of the pin and it's retracting 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 
imagine the spin the, the spring is compressing compressing so it's becoming smaller and it'll come maybe about this point and that's how you have the the contour and then as soon as you remove the pressure from this I remove the item that was over here the pin will want to expand once again but how far does it expand and this is one of the coolest parts of this mechanism it's got this harpoon if you will and these two surfaces and this first face that I'm highlighting is going to come in contact with this orange face and stop it right there in case it were to fail the designers I thought it was kinda clever they put another harpoon if you will so in case this passes through hopefully the other harpoon or this face will come in contact with this orange face and stop the pin from falling out that is essentially what the mechanism is if you enjoy this video please like comment subscribe until next time and this is Rafael Testai supporting medical device engineering teams who have either insufficient bandwidth or expertise internally pipeline develops custom turnkey fixtures and automated equipment to test inspect characterize qualify and assemble your devices